carbon steel to aluminum. They say you're not supposed to be able to do it, but we got it to hold. Maybe not the pressure testing, but good for some sculpture work. I'd like to stick them all together if we can. Let's do some experiment. Heck yeah. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. I'm in Gunnison, Colorado with my good friend, Cody Algets, and he is a fantastic metal sculptor by trade. You've done some really phenomenal sculptures with all different types of metals. Typically, you like to MIG weld them, huh? Yeah, typically. I just haven't got into the TIG yet. That's why I invited you guys. Set you up in the camper outside, <laughs> week of fun here, and you know, want to try to play with a bunch of different materials. Got a new EMP 205 ACDC, and I'm hoping you can show me the way. That's what today's episode is gonna all be about. Carbon steel, stainless steel, copper. We're gonna stick it all together, even some carbon steel to aluminum. All right, dude, so you got this new EMP 205. We're gonna do everything TIG welding related today because it is a multi-process machine. It's got all the other good stuff. The biggest thing is to get started going to the settings, going up to this top where it says basic advanced. This is gonna open up all your bells and whistles, right? Then we can go back to our home screen and then get into our DC TIG, which is what we're gonna be welding pretty much everything today. We are gonna be maybe doing a little bit of AC, trying to get that carbon steel to stick to some aluminum, but we may even still get away with that with DC because we got some tricks we can pull out of our sleeves here. Sweet. Uh, as far as our high frequency start, so it has your high frequency or lift, we're gonna run the high frequency with a minimum of five amps on that foot pedal, and then our post flow somewhere around eight seconds. We can turn this up if we turn our amperage up. As your amperage goes up, that you'll want your post flow to be a little longer. The pre-flow is nice to get your tungsten started and keep things clean right at the jump. So I don't think that's too much of a big issue right there for what we're working with. But we're gonna be running DC I think with the thin stuff that we're welding today, you love your thin stuff. So we're gonna be somewhere around like 75 amps. All right, let's see what it's got. Cody, you're a metal sculptor. Where do you find your stuff? Kind of all over the place, you know, like this copper came off of a wall up on the mountain. The brass is like, Kick plates from a uh, you know, yard sale or stainless. So thin. Uh, this came off a backsplash from a restaurant up in Crest Butte. You know, job site leftover. Little bits of here and there. We got some, that's stainless, right? And then, oh, there's the carbon. Oh, that was hard to tell. Them. That'll little stay there. Um, but yeah, we're gonna weld all this. And then you have this gas tank off a motorcycle. It's real pretty. The backside, not so much, but we wanna build the next sculpture out of this. And you need to weld a bunch of these brass feathers is your goal. I've had this in my mind for a while for this. The colors that I can get with the brass and uh, move to stainless. Get all the different types of colors and textures on your art piece, but we're gonna talk today about how to weld all these to one another and even just some weird stuff. Good enough to get you by for some sculpture work for sure. This stuff ain't the code. Don't hold me accountable if it breaks. Now the first one you're probably pretty familiar with. We're just gonna do some simple stainless steel to carbon steel. We're gonna do a butt weld. I'm just gonna pinch everything together, make sure it's touch, touching, barely tap my foot pedal and get something to fuse and back out. It's just happened so quick. I mean, we're at 75 amps, we could probably go a little thinner, but you see how it wants to run away from us? Mm -hmm. You know, that's where we wanna even consider going down or in the amperage. So let's turn it down. Just go ahead and turn the knob and turn it down to like 55. And now we got this hole. We've got some of this 309 030 MIG wire from Blue Demon. We're just gonna just, dude, my, my foot pedal is barely pressed down. I'm barely on it. That's the trick to this thin stuff. And really the trick to all of this welding that we're gonna be doing today is all foot pedal manipulation. If you can manipulate this foot pedal, you can make a weld with just about anything. We're gonna start on one end and make a little weld, trying to have that wire on deck just waiting for that wire that metal just to break down i don't have my foot floored i want you to look at the machine cody how much amperage am i using six okay now how much 23. so that's about where i'm welding this at and i'm just and i keep that filler metal right in the front of it i'm not dipping any like specifics i'm just just keeping some metal on deck to satisfy that puddle. And then I keep that gas over top of it to clean, clean everything up. But welding this carbon steel to stainless steel really isn't a big deal. It's definitely, if you're considering welding some carbon steel to stainless steel, just get the right filler. Some 309 is typically what a lot of people will use. They weld so much the same that it really doesn't make much of a difference. So looking at that, we got like, what is this? 22 or 26 gauge-ish. It's really thin. Yeah. Yeah, probably 24. But that little bit of a puddle, you asked me the question about 
Yeah, when you hit that like 23, 24 volts, I was. What? Amperage. Amperage. This is a constant current processor. We set our amps. You're right. <laughs> You're right. You got to get it out of your head, like how much amperage you need when you have access to a foot pedal. I don't know what was working because that's why I had to ask you. So I know where it's breaking down. Like this was puddly. This was a puddly puddle for this, this metal right here. And at 25 amps, it seemed to be good. So if we wanted to weld this all day, we want like 30 amps. I always need a little bit more in case I get in trouble. Like when in doubt, throttle out. Right? I like to have a little bit more add wire, get off of that. I know a lot of people, they want to slow down. You got about five seconds is the golden rule. My buddy Scott Robbie said, you got five seconds of reading what's happening before you mess it up. That's what you should be trying to think of. Should after five seconds, should I turn it down? Should I turn it up, gas up, changes, torch setup, whatever it may be. I've already dipped my tungsten in that five seconds. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, dude. So now we're going to move on to welding stainless steel to copper. Now this is still pretty, pretty simple. The only thing that's gonna change is the fact that copper and stainless have a different melting point. They're both the same thickness as we're dealing with this thin sheet metal again. The copper is gonna take a little bit longer to heat up. So we're gonna point at the copper first, make sure we got a puddle, and then we'll point a little bit more at the stainless steel, all manipulating that foot pedal. Like whenever I want the heat, I'll give it to myself, right? And until I see that happening, I might favor the copper, have the heat, and then whenever I know I have it, then we can move it over. So let's start, we'll light up. I'm gonna see how that stainless, it just wants to run already. Yep. So I'm gonna force myself over that copper and it, once it gets high, it gets hot. And nicely enough, this silicon bronze, if you cool it off, you can patch a hole pretty good because I just put up good one. But I'm feathering my foot pedal now, so I'm like hammering down on it to really sink that spot in. And now we'll take our little hammer, line up everything. Get another little tack on here. And we're gonna go back to now thinking more of that steel to stainless steel kind of concept. The heat's there. We're gonna get our foot pedal down, locked in just enough to see this heat. The nice thing with this is I like to see a little bit of sink. I wanna see that sink to make sure I get that, that fusion with that copper. And then go back in, digging in. It, it really starts to flow a little bit better once that copper gets some heat and if i have any problems i back off that foot pedal put a little daub of my silicon bronze Woo -wee, there's a hole god god that's the scariest part about that thin stuff is when you have to go chase a hole down yeah that's why i've been avoiding this a little bit i'm on that foot pedal just enough to have light no more and then i just ease in where i need it just fluttering my foot pedal. And you're running about 16 most of that, and then at the end you jumped up to about 24 amps. Taking a closer look, that's our steel to copper, or stainless steel to copper. So like right here is where I see like a lot of good stuff. Like I wanna see that puddle sunk in. Anywhere you see that cold glob, that's my little band-aids that I was throwing on there when that copper was running away. This is some thin stuff. Like that's some thin material right there. And we're just playing at those low amps, just fluttering that foot pedal. It's a lot harder to tie into that stainless steel. The melting points is, are completely different, but this will put a nice solid weld on there and it's gonna hold that copper. It'll rip the copper before it rips out the weld. So next up we got this brass, right? We got brass on brass. I know they're not dissimilar, but it is a tricky metal to weld. And the trick to it is silicon bronze. This stuff is like ketchup. You could put it on anything, bro. It is absolutely fantastic for welding a lot of dissimilar metals, especially ferrous and non-ferrous. But this brass is gross because it has like a weird fuming point where you get too hot and it just fumes up like crazy. But we're gonna treat it a little bit like copper and get it a little hot first. Our arc wants to wander around. We're gonna aim for the corner. All I'm doing is just kind of preheating it. And when I see it start to get a little fumy, I know I've got to that temperature that I need. So then I'm gonna back off my heat, ball up some of this silicon bronze wire and then kind of floor it a little bit. That little spitter and pop and stuff, that's really normal. So I'm tacking the corners. We've got a fume extractor on here now because this stuff is very smoky. We see that it's starting to spit. We can add that little bit of silicon bronze. And now we're gonna take off down the joint. That little pop and fizzle is just normal. And I'm, I'm manually pulsing my foot pedal here. So I'm off the heat and then I'm back on the heat. When you can see I get back on that heat, it sucks into that puddle. 
It's very normal for it to spitter and pop and all that. Don't use your nicest TIG welding setup to weld this stuff, you know. The puddle's not real puddly either, but it's very weldable. It just, it, it fights you. Taking a good look at that brass, man, you can see all that schmutz and that's just, man, that brass is kind of nasty to weld on. We do got some good fusion through there and it does weld. I mean, it welds, man. It's just not my favorite. And my foot pedal motion is like blah, flooring it until it's, it's gonna soak in and then it's gonna wanna spit. So that's why you gotta come off of it. And the same kind of method is also used for like welding on anodized aluminum too. And you're saying that blue gas is a good indication when it's off gas in or? The sound is what I'm really focusing on. Once I start to hear that pop, I know that I'm getting too hot with it. I wanna stay more on my bronze weld, kind of pushing that, that metal into the, bron the brass, okay. right? And that really helps kind of keep it from being too aggressive and getting some good penetration too. All right, let's try to do the steel to brass. We've gotta kind of consider that we have a little bit more preheating needed. Uh, maybe favoring over here a little bit to get the heat up. Uh, the tack is going to be the first test. As long as they're touching is what we're going for and some good penetration. Woo, that carbon steel ran off on me. That was a mess. All right, we got a hole to fill. Let's get back in there. Things are getting hot. My arc wants to stay on that piece of steel. I don't want that. Get a little blob of that silicon bronze, that good stuff. Floor it, back off. Floor it back off. Floor it with some wire. Floor it with some wire. Floor it. We know that steel is going to connect when we floor it. We've got a good puddle on that bronze. Right when we see that fizzle and that pop, again, that's how we know we're getting, we're getting there. We want that. You're going to want to see it kind of want to blend into that steel. So we kind of want to get it to that real hazy, nasty, but that's how we know we get that complete joint penetration when we see that real flat weld. I'm gonna come back to the back here. Woo! Got too punchy. It's good to see you do that because I'm gonna need to know that technique. Right there at the edge of any plate, it's not gonna be able to handle the heat or it gets hot way quicker. So that's something to consider. But we've been welding all of these different metals at the same amperage. We haven't changed a thing. It's all been just this foot pedal manipulation. Ooh, man, that's a hole. I'm not saying these are up to code to no standard, but I can tell you that's going to have some freaking penetration on the back of it. All right, so we're taking a closer look at this steel to brass. Look at the backside, dude. Like, this is sloppy and stuff, right? This is real nasty, but it's all broke down. Like, you can st see that barrier that silicon bronze was able to melt through, and it's, I mean, it's stuck. It's steel to brass right there. This looks a lot better on this side that it front edge of the weld that we captured versus going back. Maybe it's a good idea to work from the center towards the edges where the, the heat doesn't hold so you don't have a blowout. You notice how I was way over here on this brass? From my angle, it looked like you're at least an eighth from that joint onto the brass side and carrying it over. Yeah, I really was favoring this because man, you saw right when I lit up, wow, it blew, oh, up. It like blew a freaking hole into that steel. There was something on my tungsten that made it you know, want to keep grabbing the steel a little bit more, maybe how it was grounded to the table. But overall, I think we'll be able to get set up pretty good to work on your tank over there. But first I'm going to show you that we can even weld aluminum to steel with some silicon bronze. I don't know if it's up to code. We did it a little bit earlier. Give me a hammer. Where's that hammer at? Let's see if it'll... So we got the weld on that steel. Ugh. Steel to aluminum. Ah, yeah. oh, there it goes. There it goes to shatter. Let's see if we can get one to hold up a little bit stronger though. Now we tried that other one on AC first. We're gonna just run DC on this piece of aluminum. Oh shoot, we're gonna need more beans. I need like 150. Without AC, we have no really good way of breaking up that oxide, but I do wanna just kinda braze this bronze, silicon bronze wire into the aluminum. I think that's what I wanna do. Just dump a bunch of bronze in there. I bet it's coming out the other side. It's probably going underneath that oxide layer. And I'm gonna weld this little piece of steel. Put both sides some silicon bronze. We didn't even prep none of this. Who needs prep? Snap that sucker together. I don't know if it's, ah! You don't wanna be like this. This is disgusting. What do you think of this technique? It's definitely different. I mean, you can see. <laughs> Yeah, it definitely is different. 
Hey, but that's all about experimenting. See what you can get to stick. I'm not saying this is sticking that great, but I'm closing up what void was there. And again, it's all manipulation of that foot pedal, starting off with a little bit of amperage, then giving it a little bit more until I see it blend or fall. Hell, we're like not even on AC when everyone says you have to weld aluminum with AC. Now, I'm not saying we're welding. We're making art. We are making art. It definitely gives me some ideas with the texture and the different materials. Yeah, if this holds okay, you know, for a non-structural art piece. I know you were thinking 410 steel with some aluminum at the same time. Yeah, totally. And we didn't even need AC or anything. Now this machine has all those capabilities, but we tried it and we didn't seem to get that penetration. DCEN is that penetration side. Let's go one more around to make sure I get wrapped those corners as they say and then we'll stress test it. So we saw how much force it took to break the AC welded steel to aluminum right there. So now we've got the DC version. Neither one of them look good. But they'll work for art. They'll work for art. This one, I don't hear, I didn't hear as many tinks as it was cooling off and I don't see any like lack of fusion other than like the couple just ugly spots. Where's that? Where's the hammer? The hammer. Damn, yeah, that's way better. The old fillet weld brake test. Dude, check that out. DC weld. There it goes. Dang, ripped it from its roots, bro. That was like all that silicon bronze that we were dumping into it. That's, that's what was holding me and we ripped it back out. Let's get your project over and start welding some brass to some carbon. Let's do it. So what we're gonna do is gonna puddle up a little bit on your steel gas tank and I'm just gonna go for that fume corner. Your pedal is almost like a filler metal to get it tacked. So puddle up a little bit on the carbon, get that corner hot enough, then grab a little bit of silicon bronze or a lot of it, the whole stick of it. We'll put, move it wherever you want, preferably no gaps. And you know that bronze is about to run so I like to have that sacrificial kind of piece of silicon bronze wire. Yeah, I saw you ball it off there. Yeah, so you get that balled up there and then it'll sink into where it needs to go. That's yeah. probably about all I do just because of coloring. Yeah, it's gonna take a lot of argon. All right, now you're gonna do a couple of them. Sweet, I'm gonna grab my gloves. So go ahead and keep that feather away from the steel until you get a puddle. Use it as like a filler. Gotcha. Otherwise it might burn back. Get a little closer with it. See if you can't use the corner, tippy corner of it. Right when you see that fume, you should have something stuck. So now that you can move it, now you can get that. That's the tack that you want to get solid, then come back. And this is where I'm going to get my sacrificial. Yeah, and now you got to have that wire kind of ready. That's pretty solid, I mean, for yeah. what? And then if you don't like, like exactly where that is, and you can still take that glob and move it. Yeah, try to take that torch and just move that little bit of tack around. Sure wants to jump to that brass, huh? Yeah, there you go. Remember that foot pedal pulse that we talked about? That's how you're gonna really manipulate it and not let it get away from you. Hey, get that puddle going and then start shoving some wire in there. You like use the wire to cover the hole. That's just going away so fast. <laughs> Thanks for watching everyone. I hope that helped if you ever were curious about welding different metals to one another. It really works well on this little bit of sheet metal. You're gonna need a lot more amperage on a machine if you go up in these material thicknesses. But that's just DC straight polarity, working a foot pedal just to get that metal to do what we want. Good enough for our projects. While Cody wraps up with his, or actually gets really busy into starting one, we'll see you on the next one.